Welcome in everybody. So today we're going to go ahead and do a quick review for friction and friction problems. Now in last class we had this problem. Uh, yours may be slightly different with different numbers, but the concept is the same. So we're going to go ahead and if you want to, you can slightly change your numbers or you may go along with this. But the problem was you have an 80 kilogram box along a surface with a horizontal force of 550 newtons. The box experiences a kinetic friction of 0.1 while in motion. What's the acceleration of the box? So again, your problem may have slightly different numbers, but it works exactly the same way. So if you write this down, you can go ahead and probably solve yours. All right. Uh, now we're looking at the acceleration of the box. So it looks a little complex, but again, just draw your FBDs and go from there. The mass of the box was 80 kilograms. That goes inside. Only real forces, actual forces, get depicted on our diagram. I haven't labeled everything yet, but I will eventually. Force applied was 550 newtons. We are saying that it's going to the right because the problem didn't state which way it was going. The one on the left, the pink one on the left, will be force of friction. The two vertical arrows that you see, the bottom one is FG and the top one is FN. As of right now, I haven't labeled anything and I haven't solved for those variables, so I haven't put them there. The kinetic coefficient of friction is 0.1, and technically that does not belong in the FBD diagram, which is why it's to the side, and that's it. Okay, so the question asks for finding acceleration, and some of you or most of you are going to be too quick to jump to an equation, which is F equals MA. Well, while you eventually want to use F equals MA, you got to understand that the only variable you have right now is your mass, the 80 kilograms. We don't have our F, even though you see force applied. The capital F on its own is net force. So net force is something that we don't have yet, and we're trying to solve for acceleration. So you can see the problem is the fact that you're missing two variables out of a three-variable equation. So we can't just solve for F equals MA or use that equation yet. Before we can do that, we need to find, obviously, net force. So before we can solve for A, we need to solve for net force. Net force in the x direction, because this is a horizontal movement. So we need to solve for F, or the capital F, with no subscript as net force first. And before we can solve for that, you have to solve for force friction before the net force. And before you can solve for force friction, you need to solve for normal force. Now pay attention to the difference between all these different forces. Fn, the one with the subscript of, subscript of n, is for normal force. That's usually equal to your weight of the object. That's the support uh, force that is exerted upwards on an object to keep it uh, support its weight. So F normal is different than the capital F that you see, the net force. There's three different ways to write net force. You can write net force with the capital F, you can write net force with the little epsilon, the weird E looking symbol F, or you could write it as F net. So again, there's three different ways to write F net force, but only one way to write F normal. And the difference between the two is normal force is an actual force that gets depicted on your diagram, which would be the top one here, whereas the net force won't be depicted. The net force depends on the forces that you have in the X or Y direction. So our net force in the X bit relies on the two pink arrows. Our net force in the Y relies on the two cyan or blue uh, vectors. All right, so before we can solve for A, we got to do a couple of steps. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember, the easiest way to knock anything out is to go after FG. If you have a mass in a problem, you can always find FG. So FG is mass times gravity. 80 times negative 9.8 gives us negative 784 newtons. That would be the bottom arrow. If an object is on a flat surface and you're not pulling or pushing at an angle, then FG will always equal FN, the weight that is supported by the upward force of the surface. So in this case, F normal is 784 newtons. This is the upward vector in that diagram. Now that we have F normal and we had coefficient of friction from the problem, we can find force friction using our equation number eight. Force friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So we substitute our values, FF is equal to 0.1 times 784, which is equal to negative 78.4. The numerical magnitude value of that force, frictional force, is 78.4.
the negative only indicates our direction, which is to the left. So now, on our left arrow, we can put negative 78.4 newtons as our force friction. And before you know it, your diagram is completed. You found Fg, you found Fn, and you found the force friction. So, again, you might be thinking that it's time to use the F net is equal to mass times acceleration, but remember, we're still missing both the F and the A. The F, of course, we're referring to net force. And there's no way for us to find net force through M mass times acceleration if we're missing acceleration in this problem. So the only way for us to find net force is to rely on to see what it, the net force depends on. In this problem, we have force friction and force applied in our horizontal direction and horizontal component. So the net force is the sum of those two forces. So we simply just substitute our values. F net is equal to negative 78.4 from our force friction plus our 550 newtons from our force applied. Add those two together and our net force in the x direction has a value of 471.6 newtons. So now we finally found everything that there is to find. We found net force, and we can go ahead and finally solve for our acceleration. So remember, we go back to our equation, the capital F net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Substitute your values. Net force was 471.6. Mass was 80, so it's 471.6 is equal to 80 times our acceleration. And since you want to solve for and isolate the, for the A, right now it's currently being multiplied. Do the opposite of it, which is divide by 80 on both sides. And you get acceleration is equal to 5.9 meters per second squared. So again, it goes back to looking at like a really complex problem, but you just have to take it one step at a time before you get to everything that you need. So when we put our diagram, this is what our diagram should look like. Force applied to the right, 550. Force friction to the left, negative 78.4. Our Fg was negative 784 newtons, and our Fn, normal force, was 784 newtons. Those are all real, actual forces that are depicted in this force by diagram. Nowhere in this do you see a force for net force. There is no vector for net force because it's not an actual force. It's the sum of your forces. So I've put that to the side. Coefficient of friction, kinetic friction, was 0.1 and our net force, or F, was 471.6 newtons, which is a difference between our right vector and our left vector. So that's how you solve a problem like that. Now, for the next problem, this one is from the homework assignment, and some of you may have been very confused with this, and most of you, this is the first time you're actually seeing it. So let's go ahead and solve for this. It says you're, solving, you're driving a 3,300 kilogram car at a speed of 32 meters per second along an icy road. While approaching a traffic light, you see it suddenly turn red and you have to slam on the brakes in order to stop. The tires begin skidding and the car slides to halt in a distance of 144 meters. Part A, calculate the acceleration of the car while it was slowing down. Part B, calculate the coefficient of sliding friction for the car on a sliding road. If you did the homework, or if you attempted it, you notice that I put certain hints on this problem, especially for part A. Now, uh, the problem with this is, there's no problem, it's just that what confuses a lot of students is the fact that you guys get too equation happy. And by that I mean is, as soon as you see something, you're like, oh, I've got to find acceleration, we've only been learning about forces, so it's got to be F equals MA. We never jump to e e equations in this class. so. Again, it says calculate the acceleration of the car while it was slowing down. And if you want to use F equals MA, you notice that there is no mention of force in this problem. So you can't use that equation. Instead, you have a bunch of other clues that can help you find acceleration. And if you think about it, we've learned nine equations so far. Kinematics was one through six. So we're going to have to go back and use one of the equations from one through six in our formula chart in order to find the acceleration. So let's go ahead and break this car down. You're driving at a speed of 32 meters per second when you want to go ahead and stop. So that's your initial, that's your initial velocity, the 32 meters per second. And when you come to a stop and the car slides to a halt, stop and halt both mean the same thing, the final velocity at that point is zero. So initial velocity was 32 meters per second, final velocity was zero meters per second. As we look around in the problem, 
there is no mention of time. However, we have a distance that it took the car for it to come to a stop, and that was 144 meters. So now we've got quite a few variables. Again, acceleration is what we're solving for. The mass of the car was 3,300 kg, even though that's not needed in part A. Our initial velocity was 32 meters per second. Our final velocity was zero meters per second. And our distance that we came to a stop was 144 meters. So based on those four variables, the A, initial velocity, final velocity, and distance, you have to look at your formula sheet and decide which equation you can use in order to find what you need, acceleration. As we look through one through six, there is only one equation that allows you to find for acceleration without having time, and that's equation six. Equation six is final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times d. So once we have that equation written down, we can go ahead and substitute our values for it. So final velocity, again, it's zero. You're still going to go ahead and write it down because this is often a mistake. Kids don't write down zero and they think they can just drop that whole end of it and not have the equal sign. Just write it down and set everything else equal to zero. So zero squared is still going to remain zero. So zero squared is equal to 32 squared for my initial velocity plus two times a times 144. Now, as you see on the screen, you can just multiply the two numbers, two and 144, because all three of them are being multiplied. So it doesn't matter in which order they are, all three are being currently multiplied. So as we solve through this, it's zero is equal to 1,024, that's from the 32 squared, plus 288a. The 288 is from the two times 144. Now, we eventually want to solve for acceleration, and currently it's being multiplied by 288, but before we can do that, you have to subtract by 1,024. So subtract on both sides by 1,024, and you get negative 1,024 on the left-hand side is equal to 288 times acceleration. And finally, we can go ahead and solve for acceleration by dividing by 288. So on both ends, you divide by 288. On the right-hand side, it cancels out. On the left-hand side, it gives us our answer. So the answer for part A is the acceleration is negative 3.56 meters per second squared. And that makes perfect sense because the car is slowing down, even though the velocity, you're moving to the right, the acceleration is in the opposite direction to slow you down. That's the answer for part A, is negative 3.56 meters per second squared. And as you just saw, we didn't do anything with force equations. Now for part B, it says calculate the coefficient of sliding friction for the car on the icy road. So now we have to get back into using something for forces. So as you can see, what I've highlighted in orange is the two words of skidding and slide. Skidding and slide indicate that the force slowing the car is force of friction. Yes, you are applying brakes. However, the brakes aren't doing anything else for you because the wheels are skidding, tires are locked up. And at this point, the only thing that's causing you to slow down is the friction between the tires and the road. So that when, if we were to draw a diagram, our FVD will look like the one on the bottom. You have our mass of 3,300 kg. There's FG and FN. There is no force thrust because remember, you are not causing this car to go forward because you're accelerating or because you're applying the throttle. You're applying brakes, but we can't even take the brakes into consideration because the brakes aren't slowing you down anymore. Your car is sliding at the moment. So the only thing that's slowing you down is the force of friction. So that's our FBD. The force of friction is to the left, and that is the only horizontal force that we have. So the net force in the x direction is equal to force of friction, which means that when you find the net force, you find the force of friction. You don't have to have multiple forces in each direction. They can be made up of one to as many as you may need. In this case, there's only one horizontally. So let's go ahead and take this down. All right, to calculate the coefficient of sliding friction in the car, we're gonna need to find the net force in F equals MA. So we can find our net force because we have our mass and we calculate our acceleration part A, 3300 times 3.56 gives us a net force of negative 11,748 newtons. As you just saw in the previous diagram, 
force friction was the only thing there horizontally, so the net force is equal to our force friction. So our force friction is also the same exact value of negative 11,748. And from there, we can go ahead and we need F normal because our equation eight requires us to have both force friction and the normal force before we can solve for the coefficient of friction. And finding F normal, our weight is pretty easy as long as you have the mass, which we do. Take Fg is equal to mass times gravity, 3300 times negative 9.8 and the FG, the vertical arrow downwards, is negative 32,340 newtons. If we go ahead and take our upwards supported weight, that would be FN, and that's 32,340. So now we have force friction, we have normal force, we can go ahead and solve for the coefficient of friction. Now again, I know force friction, we have a negative value to it, but for when it comes to solving for the coefficient of friction, we're only concerned with the magnitude, the numerical value of it, not the direction. So the numerical value of force friction was 11,748 is equal to the coefficient of friction times our normal force, which was 32,340. So just go ahead and divide by that amount, the 32,340 on both sides, and what you get is the coefficient of friction is 0.36. Just do a quick check. It is between zero and one. Obviously it is a decimal. There is no units attached to it and it should not be a negative answer. So there you have it. Uh, what <clears throat> seems to be a very complex problem again is pretty easy as long as you do what I ask you to do, which is write down all the variables and then see what you need, each question you need to use before moving forward. So again, uh, this was one of the trickier problems in the course. Uh, on the homework assignment, I'm not sure if you'll see something like this on a quiz or a test, but at least you have it here. Okay, thank you and have a great day.